So we're beginning our Hanoi tour. Officially here at Hong Kim Lake, and what's the plan now? What local Vietnamese do, which is grab a bun mi. So here we are. Ah, the bun mi. Thank you. Black coffee with ice and condensed milk is what we would call cafe soda. And if a hot coffee? Oh, you know, one thing I like about Vietnamese coffee is that the coffee is very well balanced. Huh? Pop. You want to have some? So this is the cha ka. Cha ka. Hi folks, welcome to Hanoi and I'm with my kid brother Manish Amanna who lives in Ho Chi Minh City but has flown out to Hanoi just for the next couple of days to basically walk me around the city, yeah, show me the sights and also do some tasting. So right now we're at Hon Kim Lake. At Hon Kim Lake? Well this is in what we call the old quarter which is which has the old French colonial history to it, lots of old architectural stuff. Uh, narrow streets and alleys, lots of action happening here on the weekends. It's a very, very, uh, one of the most famous spots in, in Hanoi. You gotta be here. So we're beginning our Hanoi tour, officially here at Hong Kim Lake and what's the plan now? What local Vietnamese do, which is grab a bun mi and maybe a cafe soda, which is uh, the Vietnamese coffee with condensed milk, ice and uh, I'm sure you will enjoy this uh, as well, Kripal. Vietnamese banh mi, which is uh, which has got a, an origin linked with the baguette. Egg, egg, yes. egg is fine. Yeah? Pork sausage. There's uh, there's uh, some salads. There's going to be some pate as well. There's going to be butter, I suppose. And in this one, they're also adding eggs. Medium spicy, little spicy, little spicy. It's the pate that goes on to it. That's some butter. Some butter, yeah. And of course there's some eggs too that's going into our banh mi. So this is a fully loaded banh mi. Yeah, looks like it. Some onions. What is that? Onion. Fried onion. Yeah. Lean pork. Lean pork. Okay. Oh, she grills it. Oh, here we are. Ah, the banh mi. Thank you. Usually it's more like a snack. Huh. Uh, most of my Vietnamese friends, if they are on the go, it's something which you pick up on the go. You're meeting a friend in a coffee shop, you pick up your banh mi, you sit in the coffee shop. You can go to another coffee shop with the banh mi? Yes, you can. So most local coffee shops are quite okay with you. Really? Getting your outside food, yeah. So that's a good idea. Pick up your banh mi, go to a coffee shop and yeah. drink some coffee along absolutely. with your favorite banh mi. Yes, absolutely. So how wonderful, how democratic is that? Bon appetit. What do you say about bon appetit in Vietnamese? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe we'll need to ask our Vietnamese friend, but... Alright, uh, fine. Bon appetit. Bon appetit anyway. and uh, we'll soon grab our cafe soda right after this banh mi. Yeah. Happy eating. Oh, I love that crunch of that baguette. Mm. Huh? Best thing to have in the morning. Feels so, feels so good. Mm. 
with the Vietnamese baguette, I find it's crunchy on the outside. But once you crunch in, it's very soft. True. Very soft, very airy. I love the flavors that's emerging through this. Yeah. Mm. You know, although there's so much meat, there is then is banh mi. It doesn't feel overly meaty. Mm. You're still tasting a bit of that crunch of the fried onion. True. Sure. Some of the greens that have gone into it. Mm. I think there's some carrots. Mm. Coriander. Oh, this is absolutely delicious. Mm. <laughs> Aren't you happy you stepped out? <laughs> Definitely beats the hotel breakfast any day. Mm -hmm. So Manish was a little busy in the morning, so I said we'll meet a little later once you're done. He said no, don't have breakfast in the hotel, step out. And I'm so happy that we stepped out to get this banmi here. At this place called... It's called Banmi Pa Ko. I'll see if I can get a link to place in the description below. But I think if you're in Vietnam, any place, I think it's the banmi which is like a staple all-time snack. Mm -hmm. right? As you can see, most Vietnamese commute to work in their bikes, in their yeah. scooters, right? So it's the most easiest thing to quickly grab. Uh, or if you're just about to meet someone, you take it to your coffee shop. I also like the manner in which the meat juxtaposes with the freshness of some of the veggies, whether it's a cucumber, whether it's a carrot. So the meat is a combination of both the fat as well as the lean meat. I think the sausage also gives it a bit of a, you know, slightly cured sort of a flavor texture. So you're tasting different things at different times. The pate is quite fresh. I love the textures that are emerging through this bar. Mm. The crispness of the fried onions, you've got the fresh bite of some of the vegetables that have gone in, perhaps a radish, a bit of carrot that goes into it, crunch of that cucumber. And then the meat is quite nuanced in its flavors depending on what you're tasting. So you're, the pate is quite gentle. When you taste a bit of the sausage, you have a slightly cured sort of a flavor. You also have a bit of the pork rind that you bite into every once in a while, which is rather uh, mellow in the manner it approaches your palate. And then you have some of that lean pork meat as well. So there's a lot of flavors and textures. And all of that ensconced in the comfort of that baguette, which incidentally is the French influence because Vietnam at one point in time was a French colony. So when the French left, they left their baguette behind and the baguette is the most important part of a banh mi. The fillings inside may change but the baguette doesn't. Delicious. So we are at Cafe Kafa. K-A-F-A. Okay. It's one of the places where I meet my Hanoian friends sometimes. It's not very far from the banh mi shop. I would probably pick one of the coffees here. So there's black coffee with milk. Uh, so black coffee with ice and condensed milk is what we would call cafe soda. And if a hot coffee? Um, hot coffee will not have da. Uh, but I need to check what the exact description for that is. But when you want something hot, you say num. One black coffee with milk. Yeah. And yeah, one black coffee with milk for him. Hot, 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 hot yeah. Thank and you. cafe oh. soda, yeah. So as you can see, the cafe soda looks layered initially. At the time of pouring the filtered coffee, there is just the condensed, condensed milk right at the bottom. So the coffee floats on top. The coffee floats on top. There's ice already. Mine has less ice, but if I was Vietnamese, I'd be topping it up with ice completely. And then of course, as I begin to stir, uh, the magic sort of happens. And that's when we get that color to it. So there's condensed milk in your black coffee. Yeah. If they can speak English, it's always good to say less condensed milk. Less so condensed milk. It, it, so, I think it means less. So this is the hot coffee. Yeah, that's the hot coffee. 
You know, one thing I like about Vietnamese coffee is that the coffee is very well balanced. To the Indian palate, I think the condensed milk is a little sweet, no? So what I also like is that as the coffee goes down, sometimes coffee can be very harsh. So that acidity in that coffee isn't there. If you have a sweet tooth, I think you will definitely enjoy the Vietnamese coffee because it's a thick black coffee and submerged beneath that espresso will be some thick condensed milk waiting for you. I can definitely feel that sweet attack. So is it what they use here, Robusta? Yeah. You know that explains because Robusta also is a coffee that is very big in its mouthfeel. If you don't like too much sweetness in your coffee, I think you should definitely ask them for some hot water on the side that you can then add to your uh, cup of yeah, yeah. coffee I'll, because that will take down the sweetness by a few notches. One, one, one. Huh? You want to have some? Just give me a last sip. I'll have one sip at the end. They're so particular about the uh, freshness, the hygiene. Ah. You ask them for extra lemon, that was nice. Just what you need. Just what you need on a hot day here in Hanoi. Yeah. It's a fermented shrimp paste. Fermented shrimp paste. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Certainly smells strong. Have a mm. sour, pungent, sour and very, very, yeah. very fishy. Yeah. The mum tom, the shrimp paste. You will squeeze a bit of lime, I suppose, and a bit of sugar. I could taste a bit of sweetness in that already. So maybe it's already sweet. Uh, yeah. There's a bit of sweetness that I'm tasting in that. So it's not so offensive on the palate. Yes, you could say so that. it's kind of, it's it is strong, it is fishy, but there's a certain sweetness that I'm also tasting mm. in that. He's not talking at all, no? Yeah, he's like... What fish is this? What fish? <laughs> he has a very short attention span. So what's the concept of this dish? The concept is that you have these individual bowls. Ah. So your individual bowl is where you will put in your rice noodles. Ah. You put a bit of fish. Uh, and then you basically so dip, dip into what you have here. So this is it. So this is the cha ka. Cha ka. Cha ka. Ka is fish. So we don't know what fish this is, but this I'm told is typically river fish. The servers will usually stir it. Ah. Let's taste this chaka. We don't know the we don't know what fish it is, but I suspect it's some sort of a river fish. Yeah, so the shrimp paste is with sugar. Can make up the sugar. Ooh, mm. some peanuts to go with it. Yeah, lemon. A little you can add. Some lemon. Lemon is more for you to decide based on your taste. Yeah. Some chili. It's like a fried fish basically. I mean very lightly seasoned. I think there's some turmeric in that, some salt. So very mild. This is making sure that some of those greens, I think there's some dill in that, right? There's some dill, there's some lemongrass stalks are braised in some of that fish oil. You gotta be a little careful when you do this because some of that oil splatters onto you. 
at least I think now the oil has been absorbed by most of the fish. But when the chap was doing it, we had some of the oil spluttering all over our face. I think that's about it. Switch it off. I have one more. Some, some greens? Greens are always good. Yes. Can't go wrong with that. Quite a nice sort of a preparation and uh, I think what really makes the meal interesting apart from the fact that the fish is lightly seasoned and uh, flavorful of its own is the accompaniments whether it's the greens, the dill, spring onions, the bun, the rice noodles, the crunch that you get from the peanuts, a little bit of zing, a little bit of citrusy zing in the lemon and if you want to spice it up you can always add the chilies and that Fermented shrimp paste, I thought, was not as overpowering as I feared it would be. In fact, it does very well to give this entire dish a very umami sort of a flavor tone. I quite enjoyed this actually. When you come to Hanoi, this is a Hanoi dish. Yes. When you come to Hanoi, try the cha ka. Ka? Ka? Whatever. The fish. That is lightly sauteed, lightly seasoned, served you with some greens, with some rice noodles, peanuts, lemon, chilies, and that potent shrimp paste, the fermented shrimp paste. Mum tom, mum tom. Mum tom. Mum tom. Mum tom is a shrimp paste. The mum tom. Well, the fish was fine, but uh, this is one of those eateries where if you walk in as a tourist, you get ripped off, and that's really what happened with us. I think the dish should not have cost us more than 200,000 uh, VND but we ended up spending three times that price and when we walked in we should have realized because there's nobody else in that place and uh, so do taste that dish, do taste the chaka when you're in Hanoi but definitely not at this place and before you order a dish, I think that's a lesson for us as well, ask them, especially if you're a tourist, ask them to see the menu or the price of the dish if they don't have a menu handy. A lot of my Westerner friends call it tourist tax. Tourist tax, that's right. Twice over, three times over what a local yeah, would yeah, pay yeah. sometimes. But that's part of the experience, the tourist experience here in Hanoi. But definitely check out the dish, the chaka. Chaka. Are you also Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be meeting some food lovers out here on the streets of Hanoi. What are your names? My name is Reena. Ura. Girish. And? Rajini. Ashwini. And all of them are from Bengaluru. And Varsha. Lovely. We love your channel, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For my matcha? Yes. One for my matcha. How's it? Yeah. Venture into these places where you find the locals eating, I think that's really where you find the true Vietnamese authentic flavours.